Welcome everyone to the Libercast episode 114. I would like to, <coughs> sorry about that, show my gratitude to everyone who partook in the people who were co will coming and partake in this, uh, in my great work that I call the Libercast. And I want to thank everyone, show my gratitude to everyone for being there and supporting uh, uh, my work and, and being there and asking questions. So I invite people to, if you have questions, just ask them. I'm going to look in as, as much as I can in the comments. <coughs> Sorry about that. So um, tonight, it's uh, before I'm starting, I just want to you do my usual. The one great work network.com. It's an incredible aggregate of searchers and content creators that are working their ass off to bring useful information into the world. And these information are about the occult, morality, natural law, anarchy, abolitionism, and many other um subject uh, uh as important and as fascinating as it can be and it's absolutely free <coughs> so thank you and go see the one great work network there's french people there's english people there's italian and there's 70 of them now or more so here we go So I'm not gonna wait, and and, and I'm gonna introduce James. Hey, thank you, James, for being here tonight. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. You were muted. Oh. And I oh. was for some reason. I, <laughs> I don't know if everybody heard that. So um, again, here we go. Uh, let's move on. So um, thank you for being there, James. Thank you for sharing your time with us tonight and, and your knowledge. And uh, I want to ask you if you uh, can quickly go over your bio and your work and then um, tell us where you come from and where you're at and where we can get your work. All right. So I'm, I'm from London, Ontario. I used to live in Hull, Quebec. Uh, that's where I started doing this. Um, so right across from Ottawa. And uh, in 2013, uh, I began working on 9-11 stuff. So what I did was I started off by taking in a lot of the movies that were out there, including Loose Change. And uh, there was the government uh, sort of movies, the uh, official account, and then there was the conspiracy movies. So I uh, quickly landed on the conspiracy side of things. And uh, I put together a movie over five months. It's called 9-11, The Biggest Lie. And by 2016, it had a million views on YouTube. And on 9-11, 2016, they pulled it. Um, so uh, it was uh, because of copyright infringement. I had music in the video that uh, was copyrighted. So they chose 9-11 of all days to pull it down. And Facebook pulled my 9-11, the biggest live page off of Facebook the same day. <laughs> so I was down to square one. Um, so that's the, the, the background of it. Um, yeah, I'm just a regular Joe. Um, and uh, I do this out of the um, bottom of my heart. I, I just I put my stuff out there. I don't charge money. I'm not looking for fame, fortune or glory. Um, I'm just uh, uh, I'm very efficient and <clears throat> uh, do a lot of uh, what do you call it? Uh, video editing. 3D and uh, Photoshop and 
sound editing and all that stuff. So um, I, I've pumped out like 45 movies and 500 episodes. And uh, yeah, my, my website is 911lies.ca. So you can go there and the movies are on that site. Or you can go to rumble.com forward slash user forward slash um, James Easton 077. Um, so if you're a Rumble user, it's easy to find. Um, there's about 12 pages of movies on there. So there's a lot of stuff. And um, I've worked with some people over time. I've worked with different people on projects. Um, I find that when I'm working with somebody, um, it's a better project. Um, so um, the, the latest movie, I'm working on one right now. Um, it's called 9-11, The Big Slide 47, Atonement. And uh, uh, one of my best movies is 9-11, The Biggest Lie, uh, The Pentagon. Uh, that got a lot of views. Um, but it's on Rumble, so there's not as much as YouTube. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a smaller audience. and it's, it's But the people who watch it really like the movie, so... Yes, there, there's many things. This is this is the stuff that I I was uh, looking into um, in the beginning, and I I've seen it. You know, I, I I even from Canada, it was everywhere. Actually, um, I didn't have the same reaction than uh, most people. Um, I didn't feel threat by it. Um, and and it, it's a terrible thing it's not i'm not saying that it's not a terrible thing but uh it didn't affect me as much as the consciousness of of americans and how much this this uh i i i i tend to call it chaos magic okay uh, this 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 uh, influence that they're gonna uh, unleash after this this act of of uh uh terrifying demises yeah um, so I, I I I've looked into it uh, a little bit. I heard a lot of different things, a lot of different theories about that, um, how it happened, you know, the planes, and then how it was destroyed, you know, from the ground. And um, yes, that that's a actually that's very interesting. And I'm, I'm I was looking for it tonight because it's a complete uh, 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 it's a new uh, uh, chapter that I'm, I'm opening uh, tonight on the Librecast. I didn't talk about that at all. We talked about uh, a, a little bit about psyops and, um, and 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 chaos magic, but um, I think it's it's going to be an incredible tonight. I and I suggest everyone go encourage James. You know, I put the Facebook group and then 911lies.ca. This gentleman here have like a, a plethora of, of uh, documentaries and movies about it. So uh, yeah, we'll give him a. So uh, what do you want to first talk about tonight? I, I want you to inform us as much as you can on the subject. And I know we don't have much time, you know, an hour and a half, two hours. It's not much, but. Um, Let's talk about this. So, um, 9 11 is a lie. Uh, the government lied. The whole thing is a lie. Everything about it, everything the government told you, everything that was on the news, everything that was echoed and repeated and parroted by your friends and family is all bullshit. So, there were no airplanes on 9 11. Um, I'm just getting rid of my cat. Um, so, what, what really happened was, um, it was CGI and um, uh, at the towers and uh, the way they did it was uh, they cut out the shape of a front view of an airplane in the tower and when the explosion went off it blew out this plane shaped hole um, there was a bomb on the outside of the tower that blew the, the some exterior columns inward it was followed by uh, a blast outward 
Um, the way you know it's uh, there were no planes is that there was no wake vortex. And uh, so wake vortex is when an airplane flies past, it leaves a, a trail of, of vortex of the from the engines. So if it plowed into a tower, there would be swirls of, of smoke and there weren't anything like that. Um, another thing is that the, 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 the jet fuel burns black. So if you see an airplane crash into something um, for real, uh, it'll be black, jet black smoke. And uh, what you see in tower one is like light gray uh, smoke. So there's a picture somewhere in the midst um, that shows a picture of tower one from a distance just after it was apparently hit by an airplane. Um, so that's the towers. Um, they were brought down by controlled demolition and building seven came down at 520 in the afternoon, which most people don't know about. And uh, building seven is what the 9-11 truth community uses as leverage to explain that controlled demolitions were used to bring it down because it, it looks like a controlled demolition. It looks like every other controlled demolition you'll see uh, done. And uh, that ties The Pentagon's a different story. Uh, some people say that uh, um, they saw a 757 hit the, hit the Pentagon. The, the reality was they blew out a hole uh, using something called barometric bombs. And uh, these were also used in the towers. So barometric bombs is something I uh, learned about recently. Um, there's a guy named Mike Riconosciuto uh, who invented the barometric bomb as a triggering device for a nuclear bomb. He was in the nuclear weapons program. And uh, the barometric bomb has a high resonance. So it, it has high shattering power. So uh, it, could easily break apart the, the interior structure, the core of the towers. And uh, uh, in the case of the Pentagon, it blew out uh, a shape, the shape of a, of a plane, roughly. It, it wasn't really uh, big enough for the airplane. Um, so the reality was uh, there was people um, north of the Sitco gas station um, who saw the plane make a right bank. And uh, that uh, differs from the official story. Also, the times are different. Um, the clock in the fire station wall fell on the ground at uh, 9.32. And the official story says that the plane hit the, the Pentagon at 9.37. So there's inconsistencies there. And then uh, at 10 o'clock or 10, 10, sorry, um, Fox News captured an, an explosion. So um, you hear a loud boom and uh, that would be when the, the, the top part of the Pentagon caved in. Um, so there was, there was something that hit the Pentagon. Um, all we were shown were five frames uh, initially in 2002 from the there was 85 videotapes that were confiscated by the FBI. And uh, yeah, so uh, they only showed us five frames in 2002. By 2006, there was two cameras they showed frames from. And uh, in one camera, you see the, the other camera's post and there's like a, the tail fin of an airplane in it. So you would expect to see the whole plane in the camera that was in front but instead you see nothing. So there's obviously some inconsistencies there. Um, so, and then there's Shanksville. So everybody and their dog realizes that Shanksville is a joke. Um, it's, a, it's them laughing in our faces. You talked about, uh, uh, what was it called? Magic something. Um, well, anyway, um, it's like they, they stick, they stick stuff in our faces so that, um, we'll, 
will be dumbfounded, I guess. And uh, so Shanksville is like, it's, it's a hole in the ground. There's no bodies, no luggage, no airplane wreckage. Uh, it, it's just devoid of any evidence of an airplane that hit it, uh, hit straight into the ground. And uh, yeah, uh, later on, they said they recovered 95% of the plane, but they don't, they show an engine three feet underneath the soil. Um, they just, it, they put it there, just, be, just to be frank. Um, so 9-11 is a bullshit story from front to back. Um, so I got some slides and uh, I want to show what I figured out. Uh, it's called the Fibonacci. Um, there's a Fibonacci golden spiral and golden rectangle. So what we're looking at here is uh, a spiral inside a golden rectangle. So the way it works is uh, you start off with zero and one and you add one plus zero, you get one. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Three plus two is five. Five plus three is eight. Eight plus five is 13 and so on and so forth. And that's why you have these these boxes, they get bigger and bigger. Um, and it's um, proof of intelligent design in the universe. Uh, it, I won't get into it too much. I'm just gonna use it from the, the aspect of it being Masonic, uh, that they use it in uh, architectural design and uh, they use it in advertising too. So yeah, let's move on to the next one. Yes. So what I did was I took that design and I flipped it and flipped it and mirrored it again. So all four corners have a, a golden spiral, golden rectangle, and it forms a cross in the middle. Um, so this design, I applied it to the towers and uh, if we could go to the next one. All right, this is the uh, north of Sitco gas station is yellow and the, the NTSB flight path is green. So the NTSB flight path is what they say was the official story that um, an airplane flew in uh, and basically by the time it reached the first floor of the Pentagon, the airplane was like nine feet off the ground. The engines were basically touching the ground, um, which is impossible. Um, uh, pilots will say it's called ground effects. They can't, they can't fly a plane. The plane wouldn't fly, first of all, that low to hit the first floor and the, the second floor with the fuselage. So uh, next frame. Uh, we can skip that one. So I gave you a couple of good reasons why there were no planes. Um, another good reason is the Hezerkani footage. So Mike Hezerkani is a, a guy who was on a boat in Battery Park filming the South Tower after the North Tower was hit, so it was on fire. And he caught the second plane hitting the tower, Tower 2. And... Uh, the, the plane just goes into the tower like it's made of butter. If there's, it's like a hot knife through butter. It just goes right in. Uh, it's too bad we don't have video to go along with this. But uh, certainly um, it's, it's unbelievable to, for in, in the first place because the towers are made of steel. Um, where it hit, the, the steel was a... a an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half thick uh, box columns on the exterior walls. And there's an array. So um, they were made like bricks. Um, there was three columns and three spandrels and they were put together uh, like in a, in a, in a mesh. Um, and so um, you're, you have to penetrate steel with an aluminum tube with wings basically um and there's something called ductile versus brittle ductile materials tend to bend and fracture after bending before they they fracture so 
um, there's straight cuts in the uh, in the towers. Uh, and if you look at the holes in Tower One and Tower Two, it's uh, it's it's like Wile E. Coyote, uh, you know, leaving an imprint of his body, a, a silhouette of his body when he goes through a wall or through the, the ground or whatever. You see his body, so um, it's just unrealistic. Um, but the kicker is that when the plane passes by the left side of tower two, the right wing of the airplane um, goes behind the tower <laughs> for like four frames. Uh, it's a total computer glitch. It's called a compositing error. And this video is no longer available uh, in the slow format and it's 200 frames per second um, on uh, YouTube, you can't find it anymore. Um, they censor everything to do with 9-11 on YouTube. So uh, um, it's only the official story bullshit that gets on there. Um, am I allowed to swear? <laughs> I, I don't want to ruin your show. Um, no, you're, you're allowed to swear. It's an adult podcast. No problem. Right. Thanks. Um, Let's go to the next one. So this is a top view, orthographic view of the towers. Um, it's laid out in a in a way that um, the the Fibonacci golden rectangle fits uh, around each tower. There, there's a there's a connection to the relationship of the towers in the Fibonacci golden design. So the golden design is the four corners with the spirals in it. I don't have a slide with uh, a picture of that, but this is the top view of the towers with the satellite buildings and building seven up top. So it gives you an idea of what how it was laid out. Go to the next one. So this here is uh, just a screenshot of my 3D program and uh, it's called 3D Studio Max, and I have a replica of the towers in 3D uh, done by a professional. And uh, so I've used this to test out my theory that the plane hole uh, was by design, and we're going to see that in a couple minutes. Uh, so next slide. So in this slide, um, what you see is on the right side, there's 19 tridents at the bottom. In the middle one, there's 59 columns. And at the top, there's 30 designs at the top. And uh, what this means is that uh, if you use numerology, which is um, a very uh, occultic, uh, Masonic uh, system, um, what you do is you add the numbers together. So 19 is one plus nine is 10, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, 10. Scratch of the zero is one. 59 is 14 is five. And 30 scratch of the zero is three. So it's one, five, three, which adds up to nine. And uh, so there's nine in the facade of the towers. And there's also 11 in building seven. So four plus seven is uh, 47 stories. Four plus seven is 11. There's also 11 in the towers themselves. So in the core columns, there are 47 core columns. So four plus seven is 11. So there's nine 11 in the physical dimensions of the towers. Um, yeah, let's go to the next one. So this, is like this is designed for you this is uh the entire tower fits into the um, lengthwise cross section of, of the fibonacci design it fits perfectly and uh that's part of the design um that's why those towers look like they do so uh we can go to the next one Yeah, let's zoom in here. So this is the uh, FEMA Building Performance Study Guide uh, drawing that they put together showing the damage in Tower 1. And by no coincidence at all, 
um, this Fibonacci design fits perfectly around around it. And this the plane hole is directly in the center. Um, notice how the the plane wings point to the uh, top left and top right, uh, top bottom left and top right uh, spirals. So um, to me, it says it's by design, but you'll see why in a sec. Um, anyone can get this image off the internet. Um, just look up uh, FEMA uh, damage tower one and you can check it out. Let's see the next one. So I, I made the, the whole red um, to emphasize that this is where the, the plane went in. So um, let's go to the next one. So yeah, you can zoom in on this one. I, I mapped out the uh, <clears throat> the design onto the tower. And if you look at the fourth one down, it's the last one, um, the sky lobby, uh, scroll up a bit. Yeah, the sky lobby, you can sort of make it out. Uh, there, there's two sky lobbies in each tower. So the, the first sky lobby was on floor 44 and the, the second sky lobby was on floor 78. And 78 is a, it's a big floor. There's a machine room underneath it. And that's where the elevator hoists were and the generators and uh, heavy equipment on an I-beam floor. So the second sky lobby fits perfectly into the cross section of the fourth uh, Fibonacci design if you can check that out. Um, let's go to the next one. So if we zoom out. So this, uh, I call, uh, I say 9-11 was a Fibonacci job. Um, if you look at the the FEMA drawing in the design here, it's the second one down. Uh, the first one fits over the top perfectly. The second one down is floors uh, 91 to 99. And um, so this says without a shadow of a doubt that it was by design. It's, it's a totally a design. And so if you talk to pilots from nine, of nine, four 9-11 truths, um, they all say that uh, you can't fly an airplane perfectly dead center into the building, especially the, the guy that was flying the plane. Um, he was, uh, he had limited experience flying a Cessna. Um, he was said to not be capable of flying the Cessna, uh, to land it. Um, at, that was just, you know, the, the whole point of this is that, um, commandeering an airplane, first of all, you have to fend off two military trained, uh, pilots and, uh, yeah, it just, it, the whole thing's ridiculous. So uh, the pilots will say that there's so many factors involved in trying to nail the tower dead center uh, so that it would fit in this hole. Um, it's just unrealistic. Oh, boo. So let's go to the next one. So this is the same as the previous uh, two slides ago, showing the um, damage in Tower 1. Um, the damage in Tower 2 is uh, a little bit different, but it still fits inside a Fibonacci box, the third one down. Um, I matched this up against uh, footage, and it fits. Um, so uh, let's go to the next one. So these are examples of Fibonacci in the universe. So we got a few images here, plants, uh, hurricanes, spiral galaxies, um, colliding atoms. Um, one thing that really exhibits is sunflower seed pods. Um, it's all throughout nature and, um, and it is evident of intelligent design in the universe. So, um, 
this is how I know there's a, a an almighty creator, um, a an architect, a designer of the universe, and uh, I don't doubt it. <laughs> so, um, of course, the uh, the Masons and the Illuminati revere this stuff and incorporate it into their designs. Uh, so let's go to the next one. So uh, Mossad uh, is the Israeli secret intelligence service, services, otherwise known as ISIS. Uh, by way of deception, thou shalt make war is their motto. By deception. Um, so I'll cut, I'll cut to the chase. Uh, Mossad rigged the buildings for demolition under the direction of Lazo Demolitions, Inc. Um, and so they wired up Building 7 to come down like a normal dem controlled demolition, but they had to do something different for the towers. They blew it up from the top down. Um, some refer to it as being like strip mining rating. Um, so they had like remote uh, detonations um, go off in a sequence and uh, that's how the towers come down so there's uh, there's three types of explosives in the towers that um, I'll, I'll get to that in a bit um, so on the day of 9-11 60 Mossad agents were arrested um, you may have heard of the dancing Israelis um, they were five guys that were on top of the roof of their van dancing and singing as Tower 2 was being demolished. And, uh, yeah, so these guys uh, were arrested. Uh, they were detained for 60 days along with 200 other Israelis. And then, lo and behold, the uh, Homeland Security uh, chief was this guy named Michael Chertoff, who is a dual citizen Israeli. So he uh, deported them. <laughs> so they didn't stand trial. They didn't go through any uh, courts or whatever. They they were let go. And uh, yeah, the Israelis are, um, they're said to be America's greatest ally, but they're really, they spy on America, Canada, Australia. They spy on the world. And uh they're not our friends, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, so, um, um, <clears throat> so the dancing Israelis are uh, were on a talk show in Israel, and they were asked, you know, what what they were doing there, and they said they were there to document the event. So they had foreknowledge of 9/11, and they were there to document the event. So. Um, this makes them complicit, but that's beside the point. Um, there was a, a van on the George Washington Bridge. It was loaded with explosives. The police caught these guys, and uh, you can hear the uh, exchange over the recording of the dispatch. Um, so they were identified as Israelis. And... There was something called Odigo. It was a pager system that only Jewish people had. So Jewish people were warned either not to go to the towers or to get out of the towers shortly before the, the events of 9-11. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's documented. It's uh, Odigo um, was used by Jewish people to... Um, get out of harm's way. So let's go to the next one. So this is just a pretty picture of the towers before all this shit went down. And uh, I, I just like the picture. <laughs> so next one. So this is uh, the city in 3D and uh, I designed it and uh, I, I didn't design all the buildings. I got a, a uh, a copy of the city and I used the towers that I had and uh, put them in and uh, it's it's cool to play with 3D it's a lot of fun and uh, I've used a lot of uh, 3D design in my in my videos um, people remember that stuff uh, let's go to the next one um, this is your pineal gland 
it's inside your brain. Um, I, I think I'll save that for another topic, uh, another show or something. Uh, just so you know where your pineal gland is. Next one. So this is a 3D model of the Pentagon. So where I have it hitting here is next to the fire station. There's a, uh, a cheesy uh, fire truck to the left of it and a Ford van just to the left of that. And there's a heliport tower. And it was here is where the aircraft actually hit. Um, if you look at the damage to the Pentagon, to the left of it, there's a big black circular scar from something that blew up um, to, the, to the left of the uh, said uh, plane hole or the damage to the Pentagon where the, the roof collapsed. Um, so yeah, let, let's go to the next one. This is the uh, the picture that was taken of the airplane just before it hit the tower. So I actually designed this same picture in 3D and uh, I added uh, film grain and motion blur and it looks just like it. Um, so on this picture, uh, you can see a white line uh, along the bottom of the plane. Um, not including the wings uh, the, the underneath the wing or beside the middle of where the wings are. And there's a circle around what looks like a flight termination system. And this is said to have exploded um, upon impacting the building. If you watch Loose Change, um, they slow down the frames and show the airplane penetrating from four different cameras. And uh, yeah, um, this apparently explodes uh when the airplane goes into the building now it's not flight 175 and this is evident because uh united airlines flight wouldn't have this line along the bottom and it wouldn't have a flight termina termination system on it um so this leads to the second layer where um 9 11 truth buys into it into the story about um, the airplanes turned off their transponders. They landed at Seward Air Force Base and two other planes took off. So this is uh, called, uh, is related to air, uh, Operation Paperclip. So Paperclip is about um, an operation that Kennedy denied, um, President Kennedy denied uh, to fake um, uh, airplanes switching up in uh, to in uh, what was it, Cuba? So, yeah, um, the whole idea here is that they switched planes and they flew these military planes into the towers. So, um, it's a it's not real. It's it's a three D graphic, um, and yeah, the government says that it was flight one seventy five, and it clearly isn't. So that's what gets 9-11 truthers all riled up. Let's go to the next one. So I made a number of movies. Um, this one here is uh, 34. In that one, there's a whole section on the Israeli art students that were living on floor 91 of Tower One, where they were, uh, they called themselves the B thing or gelatin. So the B thing to me means Tower 2, which is Tower B, uh, according to the architectural drawings. And uh, gelatin, uh, you mix, what, what happens when you mix gasoline and gelatin, guys? It makes napalm. And that's what I contend is what you see coming out of the towers, um, both, both in both instances. Um, certainly the explosion in Tower 2, I have a picture that shows the directions in which the explosion's going, comes out directly to the east, directly to the north, and directly to the south. Um, I'm saying it was um, an elaborate plan that was set up, um, and they rocket sledded a jet engine out the, the corner of the tower. Um, 
yeah, it's it's uh, it sounds pretty far fetched, <clears throat> and of course, that's what they would want you to think. Um, and yeah, so uh, it's called six 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 because there's a lot of six 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 and nine eleven. I can get to that later. Let's go to the next slide. So this is a uh, the base of the towers. You see the people standing around. Just look at these. Uh, tower columns, uh, six inch thick steel at the base, uh, box columns um, at the top of it, they, they break off into three, tri three sections, so tridents. Uh, the symbolism of the trident is in the towers. And uh, yeah, let's go to the next one. So that's my website. 911lives.ca. I just like this picture. It's a sort of a dark, deep red sunset. Um, let's go to the next one. So I made a video when I got a million views, and it's just another one of my videos. Uh, next one. So a nice picture of the towers. Uh, next one. So this is the damage in Tower One, and you can see a person is standing there in the circle. That her name is Edna Sintron, and she died. Uh, she couldn't escape. Um, they blew up the. If you look into the hole, it's a void. There isn't. There are no floors or supporting steel. Um, it was all blown up, and. Um, everything fell fell down onto the, like the 92nd floor or the 91st floor, and yeah, what you see in in the hole is wreckage from one of the floors. Um, now you'll notice maybe um, in these images, um, in this image particularly, that you can make out where the engine supposedly was, and um, yeah, it they're just like it's somewhat bent inward, but it's it's straight cuts um, on the on the uh, exterior columns, and you wouldn't see this if um, an engine actually plowed into it. It would be completely bent uh, inward. Um, so the only thing that could do damage was the engines because they weighed several tons. The, the aircraft was uh, around uh, 89 tons, I believe. The towers are 500,000 tons each. So, and as for the jet fuel melting the steel, um, as you can see, um, this, this woman came out of the hole uh, within the first uh, hour or so, and uh, she's not melting. She's not on fire, and uh, there's no fire present. Um, it's all it's all gone up to the uh, upper floors. Uh, the fires were uh, fairly low in terms of uh, there there it was burning office furniture carpets, gypsum, um, computers, desks, telephones, copy machines, and people. And so the smoke comes out a sort of a dark, darker color, which means it's uh, oxygen, oxygen starved and it's low burning. Uh, it's burning at a low temperature. Not nearly enough to melt steel. So, uh, the whole jet fuel melting the steel story is a big load of hooey. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So in this image, I want you to take notice of Tower 1, which has the mast. It's the, the left side. Um, notice that the light's in the top there. Where Where is that located? Well, that's where the plane hit. Uh, not that's the back side of the tower where, from where the plane hit. But you can see that the lights are different. And that's because it's default lighting. There's no office false ceilings. So it's not fluorescent lights. They're incandescent lights. 
And these lights uh, were turned on while the people worked on the floors, setting up the um, elaborate collapse scheme. Um, and so what you see when Tower 1 collapses, and that's a misnomer, it didn't collapse. It was blown up to kingdom come. Um, yeah, so that that's proof. Uh, Limp Biscuit did a video called Rolling, Rolling. And in the video, there's shots of the Twin Towers in 2000. And you can see the same lighting. Um, so it's an indicator that they were working on those floors to set up this... Uh, collapse of the tower and what they would later call the compound crush um they they, they said that the towers collapsed due to uh they, they called it the pancake collapse or the pre progressive collapse which is like ridiculous um one person said to me you'd have to clap your hands 11 times per second uh to emulate these towers coming down because there's 110 floors in each tower and it came down in 10 seconds. So, all right, let's go to the next slide. So here you can see tower two coming down and just take a look at the top left of the, uh, the collapse, the so-called collapse. What you see is a dense cloud of darker smoke. And this is because it's from an explosion and it's pretty obvious um, when you create an explosion, you create a vacuum. Um, and so there's an outward blast and then there's suction back into the center of the explosion. So what you're looking at is the result of an explosion. Um, it's also darker than the rest of it. Um, they look like sand castles coming down, really. Uh, there was so much explosions going off in those buildings that it turned them turned all the concrete in the buildings to dust. There was no slabs. There was no chunks. There was no everything was blown up to smithereens. So I was talking about uh, three types of explosions. There was the barometric bomb, which blew apart the core. There was uh, the uh, nanothermite, which cut the columns, and there was conventional bombs conventional bombs that blew up the connection between the trusses and the external columns. Let's go to the next slide. So <clears throat> conformity is doing what everyone else is doing regardless of what is right. So <clears throat> that's pretty much what everybody does. And morality is doing what is right regardless of what everyone else is doing. So the, the official story came out, um, everyone bought it hook, line and sinker. Everybody echoed and parroted it and repeated it. And so it became compounded in people's heads that that was the reality of things. Osama bin Laden, uh, who was on dialysis, uh, coordinated uh, 19 hijackers from a cave in Afghanistan. And these guys all talk, took over airplanes and flew them into four targets um, three of which were successful and building seven wasn't hit by a plane and it came down at 520. Uh, let's go to the next one. So this is how to fuck the system. Um, yeah. Um, to have a quick gander at it. Um, these are things you can do to fuck the system if you want to uh, go to the next one. Truth does not mind being questioned. A lie does not like being challenged. So people are indentured in the lie. Um, if you believe the lie, you're dreaming. Wake up. Next one. So, yeah, I got a, a mishmash of stuff in here. But the Great Reset is this guy, Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum. And I didn't know about this guy until I got out of my uh, stay at the hospital. And uh, the Great Reset, they want to reset humanity back to square one. And uh, they, they want to take over the world. 
that's their goal. And 9-11 was just the beginning of it. Um, they had this grandiose plan to control the entire world. Uh, if you've ever watched the movie Hunger Games, um, you know, the, the people in the, the capital city live in opulence and the rest of the world are slaves and uh, they're poor. And that's what they want. And Klaus Schwab said to the world, uh, you will own nothing and you will be happy, he said. And uh, I don't think <laughs> that, that people agree with him. Uh, let's go to the next one. He also wants us to eat bugs. So personally, I don't fear much. Um, I'm not fearful, but I put this in here because um, it speaks to global government. And uh, yeah, um, what they want to do is have 50 minute cities, um, have digital cashless society, uh, they want to implement a social credit score system, which is basically your re your reputation. If you dissent, if you disagree with the government, you get a lower score, and eventually they turn off your money, and you are fucked. So it's a um, it's very scary, but don't be afraid. Stand up to it. Next one. So this is a a good meme. Um, it's basically saying it's the same shit, different colors. Um, they're they're one and the same. It, the the choice, the the illusion of choice is it, there is no choice. It's one thing. It's it's poison. And I I want to add before because you 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 uh, uh quickly went over nine eleven and there there was a lot of details that um. Maybe you chose to left them, but actually there's some firemen who uh, witness explosions in the basement of the building. Right. And yeah, and and you can see the 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 video. It's still there. I think you can see both of those uh, firemen uh, talking about being blown up in the basement. So explosions went off in the basement. Um... Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. The order of events was such a, as this. Uh, 8.46 a.m., um, an explosion went off in the basement. There was a guy named Willie Rodriguez who was a janitor, and he said a guy came in to the room. He thought a generator had exploded because uh, it had happened before. But no, it wasn't a generator. This guy came in with the skin peeled off his arm from the bottom of his arms from doing this, and... Uh, the skin was hanging off his arms and he is missing parts of his face. And he said, explosion, explosion. And Willie goes, where, what happened? And the guy goes, the elevators, the elevators. So they blew up the elevators. They disabled the functionality of every single elevator, except for uh, one that went to the 24th floor, which is what the firemen were taking to go up uh, to rescue people. So they were able to get up to the 24th floor, but that was it. Um, so you have the, the first stage, which is the uh, the floor, the elevators that go up within the first stage of the towers up to floor 44. You have the second stage that goes up to the second sky lobby. And, the, and uh, on the second sky lobby, you can catch uh, elevators in the second stage. Um, those were... The, I don't know if those were blown up, but uh, certainly the uh, first stage and second stage and the express elevators that went to the very top um, were all blown up. The the um, the elevators were out of order, out of use, or whatever. They they were destroyed. So um, next you have uh, the uh, firemen getting into the building. Oh, <clears throat> this is going back to Klaus Schwab. He calls it the new normal, the Great Reset, the Fourth Industrial Revolution. It's all just bullshit. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and let's go. go there, ahead. There's something. There's something else. 
there was the explosion, but uh, we can clearly when they put uh, all the 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 debris of out of the place, they saw that some people took a picture of the uh, the beams have been sawed off uh, at the bottom too. Right. So, so th there's that, and 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 I don't know if you covered uh the scalar weapon uh, uh theory and how they use that to pulverize uh, uh the uh the, the towers with it so i don't buy into the judy woods story judy wood is a doctor of uh, uh she has a doctorate i don't know in what but she has a, a degree in metallurgy and uh she talks about uh, so direct energy weapons being used on 9-11 to destroy the towers. And there's evidence of it in the surrounding streets of all the cars and buses and ambulances and police cars that look like what happened in Maui. I don't know if you saw Maui. Yes. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's cars in Maui that look identical, but this could also be attributed to the amount of, uh, uh, metal that uh, steel that was molten from the nanothermite reaction uh, going throughout the building um, turning uh, so when before tower two comes down there's video of this you can see molten steel pouring out of floor 80 I think and uh, yeah they're they're melting columns they're they're cutting columns um there's also evidence on the when the towers have come down you can see um basement columns sticking up out of the ground with a, a, a 45 degree angle cut to the columns and the debunkers will say that well that was uh, during the cleanup but why would firemen be there um there's firemen in the picture and there's this one sort of epic shot of a, a column that you can see the slag from molten metal dripping off it. Um, yeah, they were cut. So um, as for scalar weapons, uh, 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 flight, sorry, uh, direct energy weapons, I don't believe they were used to destroy the towers. I think they, they had uh, enough explosives to take them down. So sure. let's, let's go to the next one. So <laughs> I'll get to this later. Um, just, just so you know, 2025 is a significant year. Um, and we'll get to that slide, I hope. Uh, it's in here. Um, this is just a foreshadowing. Ne next slide. Um, <clears throat> The Pope is uh, a figurehead. Uh, he is uh, the white Pope is uh, supposed to be the connection between God and the Catholic Church and the people. Um, yeah, the black Pope is really the guy that runs the show and his name is Nicholas and uh, he runs the Jesuit order and these people are evil. Um, so I know there's a lot of people in Quebec that are very Catholic and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a tough pill to swallow, but uh, the Catholic church is pretty evil. Um, they hoard money, they hoard trillions of dollars and they don't save people with all the money they have. Uh, so yeah, let's move on to the next one. So this is what I was talking about. Uh, the airplane had to be this low to the ground to hit the first floor and uh it's completely unrealistic um this was what they say they got from the the blood the uh black box the flight data recorder um this was the path that it took apparently so it's surreal uh they want you to believe this um let's see the next one 
this is just a, a joke, uh, basically saying, um, you know, people think I'm crazy, but they're just stupid. Um, next one. So the white rabbit is um, from Alice in Wonderland, obviously. Um, the next one, the next slide, it'll clear this up. Going down the rabbit hole is an eye opener. It's the key. So when you want to seek the truth, you go down a rabbit hole, basically. Um, and it's, it's like Alice in Wonderland because everything is twisted and inverted and distorted and it's not, n not what you thought it would be. And uh, when you emerge um, from ra a rabbit hole, you are awake and aware, uh, basically, of, of the reality of the truth of the matter. Let's go to the next one. So uh, this is a, a jab at the jab. Um, sudden death, uh, sudden death syndrome. So the, the whole COVID-19 bullshit story is parallel to 9-11. Um, the entire world was duped to believe that they would die if they didn't get the COVID shot. Um, I have this clip um, of, uh, it's a, basically a media blitz of people on television, on the news and on talk shows and so on, talking about, uh, you won't die if you get the job, uh, you'll die if you don't get it. Um, the fact of the matter is 95% of people were safe from dying from COVID and only people with uh, weak immune systems like older people basically uh, died of COVID. It's like the flu. Um, and yes, it's false flag. You bet. You betcha. And sudden death syndrome is the new big, um, it's, it's the the most common type of death in the world at this point. Um, people are dying, like dropping like flies from myocarditis, sorry, um, blood clotting, heart attacks. And uh, these blood clots are fibrous in nature. They're not normal. And uh, so if you got the jab, um, watch out. Uh, people are dying from it. And um, yeah, this is getting... what we're calling now dying of coincidence. Okay. Um, there's also injury from this neurological disorders, myocarditis, and uh, so it's 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 killing young athletes. Um, they're getting heart attacks on the soccer field or the football field or whatever. And it's all covered up by the media. The media is complicit in 9-11 and the media is complicit in COVID. Um, it's, it was all a big bullshit storm. And you had Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum saying, uh, if you don't get the jab, you won't be safe. Uh, let's go to the next one. So... This is just to make you think. Um, if it, people in general, in a general sense of the word, our society is um, materialistic um, and uh, they're, they're kind of self-centered and selfish and they don't think or critically think. Uh, they don't want to know the truth. They're, they're happy with comfortable lies. Um, the truth is uh, disconcerting. <clears throat> they don't want to know. They don't want to disbelieve the official story. Uh, they want to be on the inside, the, the, uh, the in crowd. The, they want to be on the winning team, so to speak, even if it's to their detriment. Uh, let's see the next one. 
So the road to hell is paved with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So the UN and the World Health Organization and the World Economic Forum are all NGOs, non-governmental organizations. You didn't elect anyone in those organizations. They're all appointed. And so these people uh, feel like they have the right at this stage, the World, the World Health Organization wants to seize control of your rights uh, in the event of an, uh, another pandemic. So they can declare an emergency and there go your rights. And this is worldwide. So they're trying to take control of the world. Um, this is going on right now. Uh, next slide. So Bill Gates is the king of depopulation. Um, so Bill Gates has been pushing vaccines for a very long time. And uh, he vaccine injured, I don't know how many people, but he he did a lot of damage in, uh, in Africa and in India. Um, he is uh, the face of, uh, one of the faces of evil. Um, so yeah, Bill Gates is bad news. Uh, don't trust Bill Gates. Next slide. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is uh, just a jab at uh, the whole um, the the cult of the alphabet, um, diversity and uh, transgenderism and all this stuff. Um, yeah, it's it's just <clears throat> it's liberal egalitarianism, <clears throat> which is is like uh, inclusion and diversity. Um, it's it's an agenda and it's uh it's already taken hold um you'll see people write you emails from government organizations or um organizations that are with it um that say him her his or you know what their, their pronouns um this is this is not what i'm used to <laughs> i did not grow up with this um next slide So the magic potion wasn't for the scary sickness. The scary sickness was for the magic potion. Yep. Um, yeah. Next slide. It says, uh, you're hiding dis disinformation inside your head, aren't you? So I don't know if you saw this movie. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, he played, <laughs> he did his job, uh, his role really well. Uh, it was pretty fucking creepy. And uh, <laughs> so... He's uh, basically, yeah, it's like um, they they come after you for being a disinformation agent, uh, disinformation campaigns, uh, what have you, um, when these people are all about disinformation, um, the government, the media, and so on. Um, next one. If the, if the truth hurts, just call it misinformation. So, yeah, it, it's this guy. Um, uh, next slide. It's not for the greater good, World Economic Forum. It's for their good. So, yeah. Oh, I, 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 I mean, for people who are not aware of it, um, there's a... a globalist um, socialist communist technocratic uh, government who's gonna take the place right now and it's it's happening since years now they they're slowly programming people into uh, communism and uh, and a good example for that it's Canada perfect example yes. or communist yes. communist Castro uh... Canada yeah. is uh, under the power. They voted Trudeau in because he was going to legalize pot. And yeah. that's, yeah, that's, that's the only awesome reason. Um, he legalized pot and then he turned, like he, he said yeah. on TV that he idolizes the, the system in China because uh, it's a dictatorship and, you know, things get done. Um, 
And then there's the, the trucker convoy where he froze the, the bank accounts of all the people that were truckers and all the people that supported them, which is um, pretty scary shit. Um, it, 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 it's sort of like a preview of what's to come if you dissent against the government. So, uh, yeah, your right to freedom of speech has been muzzled um, under this guy. Um, I, I look uh, like the pop cans showing Democrats and Republicans. Um, we have a different system over in Canada, but uh, it's still it all same. amounts. It's, it's, it all amounts to one dirty bird. So yeah, it's a uniparty, and there's there's better ways to deal with uh, gov government. Is an an old system. It's called parlement. In French, it means yeah. uh, speak lies. And in English, <laughs> um, it's called government, which is Latin for mind control. Yeah. Literally. So let's go to the next one. <sighs> we must eat bugs to appease the weather god. So I'll have you know that uh, carbon in the atmosphere is 0.0. 4% of the total atmosphere. People in government, people in uh, uh, basically across the board don't realize how small a percentage that carbon is in the world. They have a this whole um, agenda to put punish people for using, for having a carbon footprint. Uh, this is all part of the their scheme to have 15 minute cities where you're only allowed to go within 15 minutes of your house and you're not allowed to, uh, it's basically working out to not driving gasoline powered cars. Uh, they're really pushing these electric vehicles. Um, this in turn uh, requires electricity from coal fired plants or oil petroleum plants or, um, you know, non-renewable energy um, and an increase in it to to charge your battery in your car, which is made of lithium. And I don't know if you've seen this, but uh, lithium batteries can explode. And uh, oh yeah, I've seen it's, it. It's pretty bad, pretty bad. Um, and another thing to say about this is that there's chemtrails in the sky. Chemtrails are um, are not jet exhaust. They're spewing out chemicals into the sky uh aluminum oxide barium and strontium 90. so strontium 90 will make you sterile and the aluminum oxide uh is basically aluminum that gets all over the trees into the water um in your lungs you're eating it you're drinking it uh, aluminum gets into your brain and it causes alzheimer's um so People uh, are going to have early onset of al Alzheimer's disease, and they'll be dying off a lot sooner. Um, it's also getting all over the trees, and aluminum is a component in nanothermite, um, and uh, it's very explosive. It's uh, if it's covering, coating the trees, the, the trees will go up like tinder. So that's just one thing to keep in mind when they're talking about forest fires and um uh, you know um i believe that they use direct en energy weapons to start those forest fires because they a bunch of them happen simultaneously um let's go to the next slide so this came out in uh, 1993 does it say i can't read it yeah 1993 so it shows a kid jumping on the twin towers uh, it, he's either Israeli or uh, Arab. It can't really tell. Uh, he's got, it looks like a blue, uh, it looks like a, an Israeli sort of colored, uh, uh, towel on his head. But, um, in fact it was the Israelis, but, um, yeah, they blamed it on the Arabs. So, um, this is called predictive programming. You see this shit, um, you see shit in movies, television, uh, 911 emergency. Um, 
it's all these ideas that they stick into your head. It's subliminal. It gets into your subconscious and um, you it's it's to train you to accept the reality of what they're what they are going to do and then they do it. So let's see the next one. So the World Economic Forum is a pack of wolves and you've probably often heard people referred to as sheep. Um, they're they follow the herd. Uh, they, they don't really think very much. And uh, these sheep are penned and the wolves are going to get them. Um, if you're an obedient citizen uh, and you don't speak up, um, this is the kind of thing that will end up happening. Next slide. So on the left is Tower 1 exploding. And on the right is a, a picture of somewhere in Syria or Libya or you name it. There's six countries they went after and they dropped bombs and it looks very similar. Uh, that's the only thing about this picture is it looks very similar. It doesn't look like, um, obviously it doesn't look like jet fuel. Uh, jet fuel burns black. And so next slide. Uh, yeah, this is uh, just a joke about Facebook and their fact-checking bullshit. Um, it, it's pretty annoying. Um, they they get their facts from industry, companies, uh, media, government, and uh, have you heard of ChatGBT? Yeah, a little bit. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm keep, I'm, I try to stay away from that. I asked it uh, about 9-11 and I got the official account and I told it that it was lying to me. And it said, well, I'm just going based on what, what's out there. Uh, so you got to watch out <laughs> where you get your information from. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so next slide. So when I talk about being awake and aware, uh, going down the rabbit holes and emerging, um, when you find your true self, your soul, your, your spirit, your being, who you are, who you really are, not this persona, this, this fake you that you were taught and told to be, uh, you feel like Big Bird in a, in a room. Uh, you feel like you're completely different than everybody else because they're still in the matrix. Uh, so next slide. So this is the floor in the Pentagon. So you saw the picture of the airplane. Basically, if it was level with the ground, it would have caused damage to the floor. But there's no damage. Um, that's all that that is. Next slide. That's inside the Pentagon. Um, there was a blast. There's a... Uh, eyewitnesses that reported percussion blasts and then a large blast. Um, yeah, they wiped out the um, the uh, the people auditing the $2.3 trillion that apparently went missing the day before on September 10th. Donald Rumsfeld reported it on television. So they, they apparently flew the airplane right into where they were doing the in, the uh, budget analysis. Um, and so all those people are dead. And it wasn't an airplane, it was bombs. Uh, many, many eyewitnesses reported bombs. Even the, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff said when he got there, it smelled like cordite, which is um, a kind of cord bomb. Um, so, so yeah, next slide. That hole there is all that the damage that was done by the light posts that went through the front wheelchair windshield of uh, Lloyd England's taxi cab. There are five down light poles. So um, it's said that the airplane was flying into the Pentagon at 530 miles per hour, which is um, 
over 100 miles per hour faster than that airplane can fly. And it said that they said that it sheared five light posts. Well, that would cause the airplane, air, air, the wings on the airplane to come off and it to explode in the air uh, if it hit a light pole. Um, it's it's far fetched and it, it's just incredible. It's unbelievable. <coughs> so I could talk more about Lloyd England, but I don't want to. Next slide. So this is the shit that was on the lawn at the Pentagon on the helipad. And uh, you can see the uh, damage from the collapse section of the Pentagon there. Um, you, you didn't see shit on the, the, the grass in front of that. You, it's more to the left of that. And uh, this is from whatever blew up just outside the fire station from that 3D image I showed you earlier with the explosion. Um, that's that's where the plane, the sorry, the aircraft hit. It was a either a, like a a missile or a missile with wings, um, something that could be mistaken for an airplane or a small uh, business jet. Uh, so next slide. So this is. Uh, <laughs> This is what basically they're saying is uh, cut the uh, the 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 light poles. Um, this it would be something like this: the jaws of life, basically, that would that cut these light poles, said to be sheared by the wings of the airplane. Remember, the wings of an airplane are made of ribs and a thin sheet of aluminum. Uh, just think of tin foil. Um, now these these light posts are aluminum, but it's thick sheet aluminum. It's not uh, it's not nearly as uh, sorry. It's way more thicker than the uh, the wings of an airplane. Next slide. These are all the light poles. So there's five of them. <laughs> uh, next slide. So just look at that. Look at the center of the tower. It's got uh, lattice work of uh, a gridlock of uh, 47 core columns with uh, lateral beams uh, on every floor. It's uh, a tube within a tube. The exterior columns um, made it so that um, they had lots of office floor inside. It wasn't like the Empire State Building, which had setbacks and uh, um, there was a lot of uh, beams throughout the building. Um, so this was a revolutionary design at the time. And uh, yeah, um, an airplane would have to go through the exterior columns, the um, supporting steel and concrete, and then hit the core. And uh, yeah, um, the core columns were, 60% uh, of the load and the uh, exterior columns are 40%. So um, the, the buildings were also designed to withstand hurricane force winds. Um, and they had uh, the design of the actual exterior core of uh, the exterior columns had a airplane feature. Uh, they, they jutted out a bit so that if an airplane were to hit the towers, um, it would cut the, the airplane, basically. It would slice it up. Um, so, yeah. Next slide. So this shot of the towers basically shows that the top floors where the airplane hits Tower 1, all the lights are off. So I had them off that day. They, were, they weren't working on their design. Um, next slide. Just another shot of the towers. Um, so they were the icons of New York City. When you thought of New York back then, you thought of the Twin Towers and the Statue of Liberty. Uh, those are the main icons. And uh, yeah, they lasted for 28 years. Next slide. 
So this is an epic shot. Um, obviously, these pieces landed straight in the ground. And it's just eerie. And there's all this uh, smoke. Um, the uh, smoke kept persisted for months after. Uh, there was so much molten steel in, in the, the basements. Um, and uh, so, like, um, it was smoke was emanating from the site for a long time. Uh, next slide. So that's Donald Trump for you. Um, I used to think he was an asshole. Um, I have a little more confidence in, in him now, even though, uh, I mean, he was bailed out by the Rothschilds. He went per, per he almost went personally bankrupt. <clears throat> And uh, he uh, he was given $4 billion by the Rothschild family. They're the most richest, powerful people on the planet. Um, they own AP and Reuters, which is the where the news gets disseminated around the world. Um, they're Zionists and they're um, Masons, uh, Illuminati probably. Um, and so Trump is in the hands, uh, in the pockets of these uh, rich, powerful people. They, they own him, is what I'm saying. Next slide. It's better to know than to think or believe. So I think we talked about this, and I'm with you on that. Um, if you don't know, say, I don't know. Um, if you say your opinion, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. And uh, yeah, it's better to know what you're talking about than to, uh, even though believing is, is okay in, in that you can pray for rain and if it comes, it comes. Uh, some things are manifest because you believe in them. Um, but anyway, I go with, I believe in knowing is more important. Next slide. So I did a show with Andy Christensen um, a few years ago, and it was a great show. It was all about Shanksville. Um, it's called uh, Point of Impact. It's on my uh, Rumble page. And if you, if you want to know everything there is to know about the whole Shanksville event, um, there's, there's, uh, it, it, it's a good radio show. Next, next slide. So this is the 9-11 commission report and it was the, this actual, uh, book was all the, uh, the, what do you call it? The, the conclusions or the summaries for, the entire report were done by this guy named Philip Zelikow, who's a dual citizenship Israeli, and he worked with Condoleezza Rice. So they had it all figured out before they formed the commission. And the commissioners reported that uh, George Bush was interfering with uh, their work. And the 9-11 commission report is just it's bullshit from front to back. Next slide. So this movie is uh, Biggest Lie 40, I believe. I call it the apocalypse. Basically, we've entered the apocalypse. If you go by uh, Revelations chapter 12, um, the sign of Virgo is the virgin. And uh, back in September of 2017, there was an astral event where this prophecy was fulfilled. Um, I think that it's happened before in, in the long, long past so that they could predict when it would happen again. Um, and uh, essentially these uh, globalists are all Illuminati, Masons, uh, Zionists. Um, they, uh, use the book of revelations and parts of the bible as a playbook 
so they're they're playing it out so right now we have the red horse of the apocalypse um the red horse is what sows the seeds of division so you have all kinds of divisive um shit going on people fighting over opinions ideas race sex class color you name it uh every way yep. possible so um we're in the apocalypse apocalypse actually just means uh revealing so things are being revealed uh next slide so i talked about odigo this is their logo odigo is the the pager company uh from israel that uh warned people who were jewish in the towers to get out of the towers and they did next slide um so i have two websites but this is my second website um yeah don't worry about it next slide um just a sequence of events next slide that's my logo that's my first movie mm -hmm. next slide um that's biggest lie seven um in it i go into detail about um the events and uh biggest life five also goes into detail from an observer's standpoint of the events so if, if you're interested at all in what i've had to say tonight um maybe watch one of my movies um and get a feel for it um so biggest lie seven is one of them that was good um next one So this is from Loose Change 3, an American coup. And uh, this image is incorrect. Um, the core alignment is wrong. And they do this 3D animation when they could have just used footage. And this is supposed to convince people that an airplane hit the tower because the animation shows an airplane hitting the tower and the the, sh the, the fire and explosions coming mm -hmm. at the, 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 the corner, basically. Um, it's inconsistent with the actual explosions. Uh, next frame. So this is my buddy, Doug Michael. He's brilliant. Uh, he does uh, radio, uh, uh, sorry, podcasts of his own and uh, they're they're called diatribes he has podcasts he goes on different shows i work with him we do radio shows um there we we just banter back and forth and it, it's it's a it's a good listen the guy's very smart like I said and uh um he's sort of like uh i look up to him next slide so my show is my daily show is called wake up 9 11 and uh that's the logo for it um basically 9 11 is a mountain of bullshit, and you just take a little bit here and you sift through it and you find something and you do, i do a show on it um there's a never-ending supply of shit to talk about 9 11. next slide this guy on the right his name is paul bremer He's the guy that was considered to be an, a terrorism expert. And on the morning of 9-11, he was on television telling the world that it was Osama bin Laden. So that's where that came from. Um, on the left is Donald Rumsfeld, who is the, uh, what was he? This, uh, I don't remember his title, but uh, he was in charge of the, the, the Pentagon. And uh, he's the one who reported that $2.3 trillion went missing. So this is the biggest heist ever. Um, and all the gold in the, the vaults of tower, uh, sorry, building four, uh, were, were, it was emptied. Uh, a guy named Kurt Sonnenfeld took pictures of the vault uh, and it was emptied. And there was a truck that was loaded with gold that 
was driving out in the tunnels underneath the towers and the ceilings collapsed at uh, the tower two event when it exploded because uh, no plane hit it um so the guy got out of the truck and ran away and the truck stayed there uh and everything collapsed on top of it uh they found it and the the workers had machine guns pointed at their heads uh as they removed the gold from the truck so next slide that's me when i'm younger um i get really angry in this video i had a lot of anger um and i'm basically telling people to wake up but um i'm talking about how unrealistic it is to believe that an airplane is like a bullet that it it's a hollow tube with wings and uh basically uh yeah it's uh, i used to do all my shows from the kitchen <laughs> so you can see i have a the twin towers in the background on a, a poster a friend gave me and yeah next next slide so that's a chemtrail tanker. Um, it's different from regular chemtrails because it's spewing like 20 times more shit in the sky. Um, this is, I did a video on chemtrail and forest fires. And uh, just look at the plane and look at the chemtrails. Do you think the engines produce that much exhaust? Um, and even if you were to go with the whole exhaust thing, um, chemtrails or it, it would be like, massively polluting the environment so airplanes should be grounded uh pro or con next so there's edna holding on to a column that was uh apparently uh, sliced by uh, an airplane wing um and uh she wasn't the only one there was actually three other people. Um, there's pictures of them. And uh, yeah, they survived and they they couldn't get, they couldn't, they didn't know that they weren't going to get rescued. That's why she was standing there waving. She wanted people to see her to come and save her. Uh, little did she know that the towers would come down on her. Next. So this is a composite drawing, uh, sort of, uh, it's put together from many images. It shows the airplane hole in the Pentagon before the Pentagon collapsed. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's the hole isn't big enough for an airplane. For it looks the like airplane. an explosion too. It, it, so they had just redone um, the exterior wall section of wedge one in the Pentagon and they put Kevlar mesh and special uh, type of concrete. And um, yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen the Phantom jet uh, being rocket sledded into a, a brick, uh, sorry, into a big cement block. Basically, if an airplane hit that wall, it would not go through it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it would uh, blow up on the outside. Next slide. So in this picture, you can sort of see it. See the see the heli heliport tower on the left, far left. Um, that black scarring on the wall. Um, this is uh, what hit the Pentagon. If it was a missile, or um, it, it it had to be a missile, uh, an it, an aircraft, I'll say. Uh, this is what many people saw north of the Sicko gas station. And uh, it's all in my movie, 9-11, big, The Biggest Lie, 39, The Pentagon. Next slide. So this is uh, my birth date. And uh, in numerology, it works out to 9-11. And uh, it's something I figured out long after I started doing this stuff. And... It's just a very weird coincidence, uh, synchronicity, if you will. 
Next slide. All right, this is a very important slide. It's the DGEL or DGEL uh, report from 2016. Um, I pulled it up in 2017. Notice what's circled in green. And up top, you have the current population of the United States is uh, 324 million. Uh, it's not the current, it's actually more than that. It's like 335 now, after all these migrants have crossed the border. Um, and look below, it says by 2025, the forecast is that there is going to be 54 million people living in the United States. So this is a legitimate weapons contractor that works with the Pentagon and every other country. They sell weapons, airplanes, helmets, guns, what everything. They sell everything. And uh, they're forecasting that only 54 million people will be around um, I don't know if it's by the start of 2025 or by the end of 2025. Uh, that's why I made that uh, meme with the shark. It said 2025 on it. Um, either it's the jab or there's some other way they're going to go about doing this. I have no idea what, what their plans are, but uh, this is certainly an affront to civilization. And it's not just America. Canada is going to drop from 35 million people to 10 million people. And same with Great Britain and same with Australia. And those are the ones I looked up. Now, if you want to see this for yourself, go to the Wayback Machine. It's archives.org and uh, type in DGEL. It's, it's written up top on the left there. Type that in, .com. And it'll take you, you can go back to 2017 and see the one I looked at. Um, and yeah, it's disconcerting. It's like the Georgia Guidestones saying, uh, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. That was the first stipulation. It's fucking scary shit, man. That's what I'm scared of. Next slide. So deprogram yourself, undo, unbind, unlearn. Um, you got to take everything that you've been told and throw it away. Um, everything that was taught to you, told to you, you got to do the inner work and you have to um, ask yourself, yourself, don't ask anyone else, the deep questions of life. Who am I? Why am I here? Uh, mm -hmm. What is my purpose? And so on. Um, it's it's a journey into your soul. And uh, I, I'm all about waking people up, even though it's very hard to do. Um, I'm yeah. planting the seeds. So I'm, uh, you've given me a vehicle to plant seeds and I'm doing it. Oh. Um, thank you. Uh, next Next slide. So the bad guys are, in fact, calling the population continuously with mRNA vaccines. They're thinning out the herd slowly, but surely people are dropping like flies by the millions worldwide. So it's happening, guys. Um, it's really happening. They're doing it. So um, if it's not the GMO foods and the chemtrails and the, uh, the mass murder uh, through war, um, it's the it's these vaccines. Next slide. So, um, it's just a joke about alphabet soup. And it's like people eat up the lies. And uh, I just my dad used to always say, "Eat up." And uh, yeah. So next slide. So. Easton is a company that makes hockey sticks and baseball bats and that kind of shit. Um, so here I am uh, making a meme about taking a baseball bat to your television because it's full of lies and deception. Um, the better thing to do, which I've done, is to use your television as a monitor for your computer. Um, yep. Yeah, that's a good way to go. Yep. Um, People need to stop watching the 24-hour news cycle and believing uh, the bullshit on the television. 
that's most of society. Next slide. Okay. And uh, because because the time is going fast, um, I need to cut that short. Um, and and uh, I'm I'm getting tired. Okay. Um, so I I and I invite people, by the way, uh, to look at the information. Don't believe in anything that we're saying, and do your own own work. When it comes to 9/11 and things like that, I think. Uh, 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 James uh, gave us some some uh, uh, some stuff to uh, to um, to put our teeth on and and to explore this uh, this uh, incredible story of of uh, 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 false flag and and control and deceptions and lies and we have to stay objective and not getting too much. Uh, uh, and not believing anything. It's about knowing, you know. I think the the the, the information was there, and and I want to thank you, uh, James, for being there tonight. Um, no problem. I appreciate every minute of it. I was fascinated by the information, and and it's not a it's not a it's a good it's a good uh, uh, moment to start. And questioning all these these uh, all these things that happened and still happening right now, as as death and war and things like that. So uh, uh, thank you so much, people. Uh, we will probably have the chance to do another one, uh, maybe get deeper into it because it was really uh, I'm not we scratch barely the surface there. I wanted to give you. Uh, uh, the mic to uh, to promote your stuff and show your uh, your work. So uh, I think uh, my job is done here. Um, thank you so much, people. Have a good night and see you next time. I don't know if it's going to be French or English, but we'll see. So uh, take care, people. Thanks. <laughs>